You just got to do it, commit to it, try it out once, see how it goes and try a lot of different styles, you know, because there's these days, there's a lot of different styles of breath work. Most of them are all rooted in ancient pranayama techniques. They've just been kind of modernized and put into different sequences and different patterns. But, you know, find one that you like, find an instructor or coach you really resonate with and give it a try because, yeah, like, your breath is with you all the time. It's completely free. It's not else. You don't have to go, like you said, pop a pill. You don't have to use a device. It, it's there with you, but you may, you may want to work with a coach for a while to learn how to utilize it, but then it's so empowering. Welcome to the Menopause Mastery Podcast, a show for women just like you who are ready for more health, vitality, passion, living life with a purpose. I created this show because I knew that women just like me in this second season of life, the season of menopause, are really tapping into their deepest desires. And we're ready to harness our physical and mental health and explore what our true passions are and peel back the layers to uncover exactly what we want out of life. I'm your host, Betty Murray, part geek, part magician, and your new medical bestie with a dash of sass. I love taking the complex science and making it easier to integrate into daily life. So let's join the journey to make this season the best ever. Welcome back to Menopause Mastery. So today I have a really great friend of mine, Jen Broyles, on. And Jen and I, gosh, I think Jen and I have known each other probably for a little over 15 years. She could probably clarify that for me. And so for over 10 years, my friend Jen has been helping people for all walks of life break through their blocks by creating a path of wellness and happiness and abundance. And she has a new tool that she's been using for the last several years of breath work and holistic practices that really, along with her trans transformational coaching, has helped countless people um, really change their life. And so today we're talking about the power of the breath why you probably might be one of the 90% of people who may be breathing improperly every day, day in and day out, and how to use different types of breath techniques to actually reduce anxiety, to reduce stress, to improve sleep, to help balance your hormones, and how to transform your life for the better. And this podcast is getting released the day before her summit releases it's the breathwork blueprint summit so listen to it and go out to the show notes and sign up for the summit so you can hear some of these amazing speakers uh, so join me on menopause mastery while i talk to my friend jen broils today well jen you know as i said in my my introduction you and i have known each other for quite a long time and i know your story and i know kind of how you got here but you have a unique story and especially coming all the way to where you are today breath work talk about that let, let my let my my tribe know your story and about you yeah absolutely um yes and yeah betty you and i do go way back you've 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 seen me travel the path a long way and so yeah you know similar to a lot of people even you know somewhat similar to you in some regards i ventured into the holistic wellness space when I was searching for answers to health issues that I was struggling with at the time, and it was gut issues. I started experiencing some chronic digestive issues in college and for years just didn't do anything about it. I just managed it the best I could. I didn't want to talk about it. You know, it's one of those like, at the time for me, it was one of those taboo topics. Like you just don't talk about that stuff, you know, it felt very uncomfortable. And um, so I just did the best I could thinking eventually like things would just resolve on their own. And it got to the point where like other symptoms were starting to pop up. And at the time I didn't, I didn't realize what I know now that, you know, everything's connected. And I thought these were all separate issues being caused by separate things, but you know, anxiety, hormone issues, skin issues, like all of it. And so I found myself in my twenties seeing all these different doctors and specialists and going to do all these different diagnostic tests and trying all these different medications. There was even a point that I spent a week at the Mayo Clinic just undergoing like intensive testing like every single day. And thankfully nothing showed up and I left without any answers or solutions. And 
And at this time as well, I was working in pharmaceutical sales. It's the the way of medicine that I knew and I trusted and I believed in. I didn't know anything outside of it. And so I felt like I hit like this wall or this dead end. And I was like, okay, I need another route. You know, there's got to be an answer. There's got to be a solution. And so I just started reading books on nutrition. Um, You know, I think common sense was telling me maybe it's something you're eating, you know? And, And so I started reading books on nutrition and learned very quickly that what I thought I knew about nutrition was not true. All the things I thought I was doing that were quote unquote healthy really weren't. And it just opened my eyes to like, oh, wow, like there's a whole new, a whole other way of seeing and doing things in the health space. And so I started to learn about integrative medicine and functional medicine and alternative medicine, all these things that I didn't know about. I learned about food sensitivities and inflammation and the mind-body connection and all this this new stuff that I was like, wow, this is fascinating. And I started working with functional medicine doctors. I worked with you for a while. And, you know, we did different testing that was functional lab tests that like really took a deeper look into root cause issues and really was supportive in helping me get my health back on track. I cut out certain foods that were potentially causing issues and really started to change my lifestyle and take supplements and all of these new things. And I started seeing improvement. Um, for sure, definite improvement in how I felt. But what I, all that to say, like turned really into a passion to where I went back to school, studied integrative nutrition and started seeing clients myself as a health coach, largely with gut issues. And what I found in both myself and in so many of my clients is that, you know, we implement a healthy food protocol, a gut healing protocol, an anti-inflammatory protocol, you know, get on gut healing supplements, do all the things like implement a lot of lifestyle changes, see improvement for a while and then hit a wall. And you know, I'm thinking, what what's going on? You know, I I knew so many people that literally they take gluten out of their diet and would be totally good, you know? And I'm like, okay, so what not working in in these situations? And because I, in the past, have tended to be a rule follower, rule follower, like perfectionist, like do things by the book. Um, And so I'm like, I'm doing everything perfectly, right? And I'm not seeing the results that I want to see. And I realized that, okay, well, one, that whole way of thinking was very stressful and very limiting. It didn't allow for mistakes. It didn't allow for flexibility. It was very, very rigid. And I think there's there were a lot of areas of my life that were very, very rigid. And that just created a lot of stress. And so... I found that I wasn't addressing, really, really addressing the stress component. I thought I was, but I really wasn't. And I noticed a lot of my clients were the same, kind of same type of personality and and that sort of thing. And so I started learning about the mind-body connection and the the role of our thoughts and our emotions and you know, what are the patterns and limiting beliefs that are underneath some of this stuff and how can that show up, you know, in physical imbalances. And around that time breathwork found me. I was not searching for it. I was not looking for it. I was searching. I was searching for answers and breathwork came into my world. And I experienced several breathwork sessions and was just blown away by the power of like the ability of using your breath consciously to really like turn down that racing mind, that mental chatter, get into the body, connect with your intuition, begin to release old, stuck, toxic emotions, and be able to process stuff like on an energetic level that is just so incredibly healing. And it just offers a deeper layer of healing. You know, there's so many aspects of health and wellness, like nutrition is key. You know, supplements can be super helpful, exercise, hydration, detoxification. And we got to do that on all layers, like mentally as well, emotionally, spiritually. And so bringing in breath work in my own life and then offering it in with my clients and my practice has just, you know, really added to that, to that healing that we can achieve. And it's like this medicine that's within us that we just aren't using properly. You know, I'm so glad you talked about, you know, kind of the perfectionism, the rigidity, you know, Mm -hmm. because I would say, you know, like 
attracts like. And so, you know, when you start looking, especially when you're in a care and physician, you're like, wow, so many of these people are so much like me. <laughs> but, you know, as I get older and I, you know, think kind of going into menopause and, I, you know, because I think there's just this energetic transition that happens in that process. More and more, I find myself, you know, because we all, we're all looking for like, all I need is just that perfect combination of whatever it is. Yeah. And everything's going to be good. And it's right. like more and more, I keep looking at it and go, why did we lose tolerance? We should be able to have this level of freedom, right? Mm. There are some things that we should probably like, don't get in touch with toxins if we can avoid them. And maybe some of us need to remove certain foods. But I find professionally after two mm -hmm. decades that more and more I'm trying to allow people to see the world as less of a scary place. And because that in itself could be driving 90% of your, of your actual symptoms because there's a mind-body connection you cannot remove. Yeah. And you yeah. can't overlook, no matter how much you try. You can't yeah. supplement past it. You just can't. Exactly. Exactly. And I, it's so true and it's so powerful. And it's something that I have absolutely realized in my own life. I mean, I could go down the rabbit hole on any health topic and the things that are toxic in our world, whether it's EMFs or, you know, um, what the water we're drinking or the, the certain types of foods you're eating, GMOs, whatever it is you let yourself get scared by those things, then, and you're scared to consume them or be around them, that is affecting you physically. Um, and I've been in those places. I mean, I, I have certainly been in those places on a variety of different topics, some of which are not even going to mention because they can be controversial, but whether it is certain medicines or vaccines or, you know, you name it. So much of the media whatever way they're arguing is fear-based. And so if you let that fear, you know, affect you, then it may not be the actual thing. It may not be the actual food that you're eating. It may be actually how your mind is perceiving it that is causing the greater issue because it's creating a stress response. And so I went through that with, with food for a while when I first started cleaning up my diet and taking out gluten and dairy and some other foods. Like I was so rigid about it. Like if I thought I got an ounce of gluten in my food, then, mm, you know, interestingly, I would not feel well, <laughs> but likely wasn't, it was, it was likely my mind that was saying, oh my gosh, this is going to make you sick, you know, or, uh, or you can't eat that because it's going to make you sick. And so so when I work with my clients, I do try to just bring in this mindset of flexibility. And it's something that I get to practice as well, being flexible. Like this is a template. It's not like super structured. It's not like if you do this, then you're totally going to go off the rails. It's a template. It's a guide, you know, and stick to it as best you can and monitor how you feel. Like remembering, reminding ourselves that our bodies are resilient. Like reminding ourselves that our bodies are strong. They can handle a lot. And we also get to take care of them in the best way that we can. There is a lot that we're exposed to in our world today in the form of toxicity. How can we, how can we support our bodies and strengthen our bodies to live within that space, right? You know, whether, you know, even EMFs, for example, I do have a lot of different EMF blockers in my home, you know, and wearable devices and things like that, whether they work or not. I don't know. I feel better with them. And, and I know that there's towers all around me and I live the best way I can. Right. And, and it's okay. So, so yeah, it is a balance of like not going too far down the rabbit hole and getting super scared that you live in a dangerous world and, and instead, instead like really shifting that mindset to remember that you live in a but an abundant world you're safe you're secure you're okay uh, yeah so much of it goes back to the mind yeah yeah no it's so true so so let's jump into the breathwork conversation because you know i think everybody listening if they haven't if they're if they're like kind of like well, okay, okay betty yes of course i breathe i'm breathing in and out right now which most of us don't realize that we're just about barely conscious that's about the amount of oxygen we're actually taking in yeah you know yeah. so so let's Give some definition around breath work, how it's therapeutic. What are we talking about here? So people have a context if they've never experienced it. Yeah, absolutely. So so I define breath work as breath awareness and conscious breathing. And there's a few different aspects of breath work. One is at least specifically in the breath work I'm trained in, which is Soma breath. 
Um, one of the goals is to retrain you how to breathe properly just in your daily habitual breath because 90% 90 of us are breathing incorrectly and it plays a direct role in your physical, mental, and emotional well-being. And so we want to implement techniques to retrain ourselves how to breathe properly day in and day out because for many of us, it's been decades of this habit of improper breathing. We were never taught how to breathe when we were younger. And when stress starts to hijack our autonomic nervous system, then the breath gets hijacked as well. So we we get to start to bring awareness to our breath and breathe consciously so we can start to breathe correctly in a health promoting way. The other aspect of breath work is more extensive breathing sessions or breath work journeys, if you will, that involve breathing in certain ways for an extent an extended period of time, 45 minutes, an hour, whatever it may be. And what that looks like is, um, so when, when I'm guiding breath work, it involves rhythmic breathing at different paces. Sometimes it's slower, sometimes it's fast. And we also do breath retention. So we're holding our breath. We're, we're doing something called intermittent hypoxia. And it's also been used in ancient prana, pranayama as well. So these techniques date back thousands of years and these ancient cultures just knew the power of our breath just intuitively. And we'll hold our breath for a period of time. And that has a whole host of benefits as well from anti-aging and boosting mitochondria in the cells and releasing stem cells and, and even allowing us to tap into our subconscious mind and begin to release old patterns and ways of being that aren't serving us any longer and start to reprogram the brain. And so in those experiences that are, you know, really intentional breathwork sessions, it's an incredible experience. I call it meditation on steroids. It's, you know, if you've never experienced it before, I can't explain it in words. It's something that you just have to try because it will, it will take you to a different place, it really creates an expanded state of consciousness. The, the, the ego mind, the default mode network, kind of that monkey mind, racing mind starts to silence. And so, which is actually pretty beautiful, starts to silence and you start to connect, you get out of your head, into your heart, into your body, and you're able to connect with your intuition. You're able to connect with divine guidance. You may feel um, less separate and you may have this feeling of oneness with everything and everyone. You will likely feel lighter, freer, more relaxed and at peace. You may have emotions come up. Um, again, this is a beautiful time to process trapped emotions. They don't need to have a memory type to them, but some people start crying. Some people laugh, some people yell, and it's just this body's way of purging um, trapped emotions that everything's energy. And there can be these energetic blocks within the body that could be contributing to physical imbalances. And breath work is a great way to move some of that. So it's a pretty amazing experience, but it is, I see it as twofold, like more intense and intentional breathwork journeys, and then just the practice of retraining yourself how to breathe. So, so for my listeners, how can they possibly figure out if they're one of the 90% that don't breathe correctly? I know what I would say in this answer, but I'd love for you to go, okay, so listener, if you were to do these two things, you're probably breathing incorrectly. What's something that they could maybe look in the mirror or check out while they're doing it? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a few things. So one, uh, get a stopwatch or use your phone and breathe for a minute and count how many breaths you take. That's one test. Another is just notice, are you breathing through your nose or your mouth? That's an easy one. Uh, and notice when you're breathing, like are your shoulders rising and falling? Is your belly expanding on the inhale or is it like constantly contracted? And notice if you're holding your breath. I think that's the thing I hear the most from people when they start to just become aware of their breath is that they were holding their breath and did not realize it. Um, another thing I'll mention too is at night when you're sleeping, notice, or maybe someone that you sleep with complains that you snore, or maybe you notice that you drool, or you wake up with a dry mouth or a sore throat, or you wake up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. Those are all other signs of improper breathing. And we can talk about what proper breath looks like. But those are a few things to start to tune into and just become aware of. Yes. And anybody that's, you know, looking at us online, Jen and I are braces sisters, because we both we both <laughs> are going through palate expansion for airway stuff at night, like there is 
you know, I look at it and go, airway is, you know, you can't, you can survive without food and water for a fair amount of time. You can't mm-hmm. go very long without air. <laughs> like, exactly. And it is critical, you know, and critical. So, you know, can you tell your story about how you figured out that was kind of going on? Everybody yeah. heard mine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So breathwork definitely led me to all of this. And it was after I read the book Breath by James Nestor. He has a whole like section in there around, you know, dentistry and face structure and how that's evolved over the years due to agriculture and not really chewing our food, eating soft foods where our faces are, it's like an epidemic of shrinking faces. Our jaws are not the size that they used to be. And now like pretty much every kid you see these days has braces at some point in their life where as you look at indigenous cultures and they've got perfectly straight teeth, super healthy, very strong jaw lines because, because they're living, you know, how, you know, they're still living how people lived, you know, hundreds and thousands of years ago. And, and we're living in more modernized societies with a lot of processed food. Anyways, all that to say, I started experiencing a couple of years ago, a lot of ear pressure. Like I literally thought they were like, my ears were clogged. I went to the doctor and asked them to drain my ears. And they look at my ears, they're like, your ears are perfectly clean. There's nothing wrong. And I was like, well, I have so much ear pressure. It feels like my ears are blocked. And so she gave me Flonase. I was like, it's not allergies. I know it's not allergies. And so then I saw a chiropractor and that kind of helped a little bit. And then finally, my holistic dentist told me about the dentist that both of us now see and said like TMJ. And I'm like, this is TMJ? Like, I don't have jaw pain. And anyways, all that to say, yeah, like what was happening is my lower jaw was starting to push up into my ears because there just wasn't enough room. And what really like struck a chord with me was when I read the book Breath, he talks about like kids that have a ton of dental work done as a child and how that impacts them later on. And I was like, that was me. Like I literally had a device in my mouth from first grade through college because my mouth was small and not all my teeth were going to fit. And I ended up having two permanent teeth pulled on the top, which ultimately made the palate even smaller. (laughs) So, and then braces a couple of times and retainers, you name it. And It was all well and good for a while by, you know, by the end of it, I had perfectly straight teeth. Everything was fine. But then, you know, fast forward 20 years and problems start to rise up. And I look back as a kid too. And I'm like, I remember as a really young kid having tons of congestion at night, having to use like a nasal spray, like a prescription nasal spray. I almost positive, like I know for sure that my tongue posture was not correct because I'm fixing that now. And still a challenge to get have my tongue rest on the roof of my mouth and so yeah so now you know i'm going through this upper palate expansion to ultimately make space for my lower jaw to come forward where it's supposed to be and so a lot of it is ultimately reversing the work that was done as a kid in dentistry which is a bummer really because you know it's time consuming. It's a financial investment. And so I'm hoping the word starts to get out about what I would say proper dentistry and maybe, you know, looking at one, looking at how a child is breathing because I was not a lot of times breathing through my nose and then tongue posture, my tongue posture, like having your tongue at the roof of your mouth is what helps grow the palate. And so all of these things that could prevent a lot of one, the dental work that's being done to kids today and a lot of the issues they're experiencing. And there is a different way of of doing things. And of course, nutrition and diet comes into that too, as well. So, so yeah, it's been a journey. <laughs> you know, it's not my ideal to have braces right now, but it is fixing a lot of things. Yes. Like I said, you and me both, girl, you know, same thing. I couldn't, I couldn't breathe as a kid. I didn't breathe through my nose. That's actually why they pulled my baby teeth out. So my permanent teeth would come in so they could do that. But they, yeah, yeah, they removed four permanent teeth and then they removed all my wisdom teeth and moved my Mm -hmm. jawline back. So, you know, all well and good, but not really what we would do today. Hopefully that is changing. I know. (laughs) I I certainly hope so. I, yeah, I think the more this information gets out there, the better because, because yeah, as a kid to go through all of that, I mean, that's a lot too. I too had a ton of baby teeth pulled. So the permanent teeth could come in. I had my wisdom teeth pulled. It's like that probably wasn't necessary, you know? And so 
Now we know. <laughs> now we get to play now. We get to play yeah. now. All right. So let's talk a little more about breath work. Because, you know, there's probably people that are go, you know, I go to a yoga class and I do some yoga breathing and maybe I do a little deeper breathing in Shavasana. But, but having gone through different types of breath work, like deep breath work, you know, think about it because like we have psychiatry in our office and, you know, everybody's kind of into this psychedelic assisted therapy and other things. And I can tell you really good somatic breath work, like what you do is, is a trip in itself in a very, very positive way. So tell people a little bit about that because they're probably thinking, yeah, you know, I've done some stuff in yoga before that's different. Yeah. Yeah. What you've done in yoga is not this. <laughs> I'll tell you that this is, this is a whole other level. Yes. You could, you could say it's psychedelic for sure. It has, and it's even been shown scientifically to have similar benefits as psychedelic therapy without, you know, needing to take a substance. And so it's great for those who might not be interested in going down that route of psychedelic therapy or might, you know, be on medications that are contraindicated for that. And yeah, so when you're in a breathwork journey and you're, you're breathing in certain ways for a prolonged period of time, again, it puts you in a state of expanded consciousness. And so in that state, you are you can have incredible experiences uh, on, on all levels from, again, like powerful emotional and energetic releases all the way to like, I mean, you may have visions, you may, you know, I've had people say they had ancestors come to them. I've had people say they ventured off to another planet, <laughs> you know, I mean, literally can be very similar to a psychedelic experience and, and very healing, very, very healing. And a lot of people too will receive downloads and insights and moments of clarity and intuitive hits, which is really beautiful as well. So, you know, if you're wanting to use the breath work for, to spark creativity or to maybe guided answers on a certain situation. It can be really helpful for that. And of course, like physical healing as well. You know, I've had people share, in fact, uh, a couple of the people that I interviewed in this, in the breathwork summit, they both had breathwork experiences that like healed their, their gut because it was like an energetic block that was causing the issue. Like no doctors could tell them what was going on or figure it out. And through breath work, they were able to release something that was energetically causing problems, just totally healed them. So really amazing. I've had people like, you know, lower their blood pressure on breath work. I've, you know, I've had people, I've had clients like overcome addictions through breath work. And so on all levels, again, like physical, mental, emotional, it's even a spiritual practice. I would absolutely call it a spiritual practice because it is just like with plant medicine or psychedelics, you can have these incredible ex spiritual experiences where you feel like you connect with God, the divine, your higher self, whatever name you choose to call it. And again, it is this experience of, of oneness and love, like pure unconditional love and i'll say personally when you experience something like that like you just know in every aspect of your being that that is true like that is the truth of who you are is love and it's a beautiful experience yeah you know it was interesting i was at a conference this weekend and we did have somebody get up and speak who's one of the foremost experts on psychedelic you know experiences and and all of those pieces and he's like you know at the end of the day it was the experience of mysticism it wasn't the the mm -hmm. mystical it wasn't the dose or anything else. It was the expression and experience of the mystical. And then the final result of every single person coming to this is love. So the truth is, is if we could just experience that mystical, whatever it is for us, like that's the cool thing about this doesn't matter what your, yeah. your religion flavor of choice is or lack of religion flavor of choice, if you're, yeah. you know, non denominational and whatever your choice is, but it's the mystical and the divine and that it's accessible. And I just want to jump in and talk a little bit about, you know, if you look at it just from a chemistry standpoint, the best chemical lab is what's in our body. And, and so if we touch the breath, even if you're just looking at what happens between the vasovagal nerve and the brain and the neurotransmitters and the changes in those brain waves, mm -hmm. that like, it's not, it's not that there's some, it's just woo woo. It's science. It's changing the physiology of the body in that moment and afterwards, which I think is so important because I think people want to shortchange this kind of stuff because they want to drop a pill or put mm -hmm. a patch on or something like that. And I'm like, you can get real far if you, as somebody that uses supplements, let's face it, I'm a yeah. nutrition professional, I'm a geek, but you know, this, this is profound and it's helpful. And 
just have to get in and do the work. Exactly. Yeah. You just got to do it, commit to it, try it out once, see how it goes and try a lot of different styles, you know, because there's these days, there's a lot of different styles of breath work. Most of them are all rooted in ancient pranayama techniques. They've just been kind of modernized and put into different sequences and different patterns. But, you know, find one that you like, find an instructor or coach you really resonate with and give it a try because, yeah, like your breath is with you all the time. It's completely free. It's not else. You don't have to go, like you said, pop a pill. You don't have to use a device. It, it's there with you. But you may, you may want to work with a coach for a while to learn how to utilize it, but then it's so empowering. Like I love being able to share this with my clients because they work with me for a period of time and then maybe like taper it down a little bit or just come back when they, you know, something comes up and they want support. But once they learn how to do it, they've, they've got it with them and they, they're empowered to do it on their own as well. So yeah, so I kind of think, great. yeah, I kind of think of it, you know, I used to teach yoga for years. I taught for like 10 years. And I obviously know the sequences. I've got thousands of hours of training, but I still, you know, I have that skill. I can go, I don't teach anymore and I haven't in, you know, over a decade because of time, but, but I still appreciate and go to get coached, right? Yeah. Because it's a part of it is also that, that delivery of somebody else sort of putting it together for you and helping you experience it. So you're not being coach and teacher at the same time. So I think learning the skills and then also, you know, staying in, engaged is also really, really valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. I love, I love doing other coaches breath work, <laughs> you know, like experiencing it myself, like, because it, even as a coach, like, it's nice to, to get a different flavor. Like I can do, I've got recordings of my own breath work. I can do those. And sometimes I do, but it's also nice to like mix it up and have someone else guided and get to receive it. And so, yeah, it's, it is nice to, to be able to do that for ourselves. Exactly, exactly. So if you were to tell well, maybe one of my listeners, it's like, oh, I don't know, maybe I should try it, maybe I shouldn't. Give them like the three biggest benefits that no matter what your story is, like, where are you going to see it real quickly? You know, because these are type A's. You all yeah, know who you absolutely. are. Absolutely. So dramatic reducing anxiety. Dramatic reducing anxiety. That's what most of my clients come to me for. <clears throat> Better sleep and gosh, you're, you're just going to have your, your nervous system's going to be regulated. So you're just going to function better on all levels, like focus, performance, mental clarity. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's important. And I think, you know, I would probably second even the digestive piece yeah. too, because you have to be in rest and restore and relaxation to digest appropriately. And if we're exactly. ramped up all the time, it's not going to happen. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, that's very true. Now tell my listeners about a summit. Now I'm excited because I got to be, I got to be a speaker on your summit, but tell them what, what's so wonderful about the summit and what they'll learn. Yeah. So I have a summit coming up called the Breathwork Blueprint Summit. It is a virtual four day event and I have brought together some incredible speakers. Betty is one of them. Them, but uh, we've got a number of world-renowned breathwork masters and then functional medicine doctors, integrative doctors, and healers of all kinds coming together for this four-day event. And we're covering so many health and wellness topics and anchoring it into the breath because your breath really plays a key role in, in all of it, right? And so you're going to learn different breathing techniques. You're going to learn how the breath supports you in different aspects of health and wellness, everything from different types of physical ailments and and how you can start to bring those back into balance or start to heal to also mental psychological imbalances, whether it's anxiety or limiting beliefs or negative thought patterns, emotional, how you can support your emotional health and well-being through, through breath work and even spirituality. Again, we talked about that spiritual component of, of breath work. And so I've got a couple of people who are speaking to that. And we, we even go a little bit into, there's one particular interview specifically on plant medicines and psychedelics. And then it, it does get brought up in a couple of other conversations. So if you're curious to learn more about that, you'll get to do that as well. But again, it's a four day event online, June 15th through 18th, and it is free to attend. So there's no reason not to sign up. Even if you want to hear one interview, it's worth signing up and getting access to all of them over the four days. Cause I imagine you'll want to listen to more than just one. Cause we've got some incredible speakers involved in this event. And I so enjoyed getting to interview Betty. I loved our conversation. And so I know you're going to want to check that out for sure. Absolutely. We'll have we'll have the link in the show notes so everybody can click on it and sign up and and those kind of those those kind of lovely things. So Jen, if you were to leave the listeners with just a, 
a parting thought or comment, what would you, what would you want them to know? I would say, again, it goes back to the power of your breath. And like you mentioned, Betty, like we have this inner pharmacy within us, of these natural healing chemicals, and it's activated through your breath. So you have the power, you are your own healer and you have the power to activate that inner healer within you through your breath. Yay. Yay. Well, thank you, Jen, for being on. I'm so excited that we got a chance to do this and that we got a chance to do the summit. It's been great. Yes, me too. Thank you, Betty. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for listening to Menopause Mastery. If you loved this, please definitely go sign up for the summit. And obviously, please leave me a review. This is how people get to find out about podcasts. And check out my friend, Jen. You can find all of her stuff on our show notes as well. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Menopause Mastery Podcast. You are why I'm here, and I am so very grateful. Hit subscribe so you don't miss any wisdom on creating the most exceptional life on our terms. If this episode has helped you in any way, please share it with a friend to spread the love and together we rise. You can follow me on social media at Betty Murray PhD and you can reach me online at BettyMurray.com. 